tell me a little bit about yourself and your background in IoT. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Adi Lungosari and I appreciate this opportunity to talk to you. Uh, my background, so I'm Adi Lungosari. I'm a managing director in Accenture Technology Lab. I've been with Accenture for 25 years and I have been actually working in IoT space. At that time, obviously, it's not called IoT, mm. but more about ubiquitous computing right. uh, for about 15 years. 15 years? Yeah. So and what did it look like back then? So it's actually at that time, it's mostly to test the technology. Uh, it's mostly based on RFID technology. We are one of the uh, first few uh, pioneers in the technology, try to get it to work, uh, to see how actually technology and computing power embedded into the environment, creating a smart environment. So mm. no longer a computer yeah. that actually sitting you have to actually right in front of the monitor, right. but it's actually something the environment knows about you and uh, to be able to react to it, what are you looking for. And kind of just blends in the background, doesn't it? That's right, yeah. that's right. So for example, one of the, the initial technology we develop is in healthcare, right? Mm. So for example, they actually understand the, you know, the environment, or what, like the weather, and if you actually have a certain allergy, they actually sort of look at outside, wow, there's actually the right, uh, uh, you know, the pollen out there, you should actually take your allergy medication before you head out the door. Right? Oh, okay. So all of those, actually, it's not just about the technology per se, mm. but make your life better. How right. make your life a lot more efficient and effective to be able to drive that. That's actually sort of the key aspect of the technology. Well, now, that makes a lot of sense for the, the person experiencing it. Now, what about the companies themselves? I mean, what, what has been the value creation up to this point? I know there's been a lot of talk about operational efficiency, and I think mm -hmm. you know that's been around for a long time. But I'm more interested if you could talk a little bit to new products and services. What have you been seeing in that area? Right. So, you know, I, I will say, look at, you know, I'm, I'm jumping to the consumer space here, mm. but look at Nest. I mean, people have been talking about Nest for, for, for a while now, right? We could be Google uh, acquisition. What actually does it provide? It's not just about product, it's not just about the service, but it's also providing you with insight. It actually provides you with the connectivity to the rest of the environment, mm. right? So right. that's actually sort of very key. It's not just about opera, uh, operational efficiency. So if you look at actually how actually people drive product, new type of product and services, is that the key aspect is to be able to drive the new unconventional growth, right? So it's not just about you selling equipment and I could provide services to you, mm. but also to be able to get more information about you and the products, the way you use it, to be able to drive R and new kind of products, right. uh, services, right. to be able to get new business partners so that you can actually together create business outcomes, right? Mm, mm. So it's not just you providing that particular uh, product and services, go beyond the four walls that you have mm. to be able to create a group of business partners. So for example, uh, we, uh, the, the, the simple example is actually precision agriculture. Right. So think about that. It's not just about, oh, I'm selling fertilizer, I'm actually selling farm equipment and so forth. But together, all these business come together to be able to say, I can actually increase 20% of your yield, right? So now how to make that happen? You need smart environment, you need smart equipment, mm. you need services that can sort of tie them together. Mm. But also there's a financial component of that, right? right. So it's not just a technology. Uh, insurance company and financial services company will be actually very interested in actually pulling together. Mm. But at the end of the day, what actually we're selling is we're selling the outcome. The outcome. That's actually sort of the key aspect of that. And this is actually where we, we see the technology is going. So outcome-based business models, are we starting to see that then? Yeah, so you know, you'll see healthcare is actually one of the, the, the easier, easier one. You can see sort of a lot of companies coming to the, together payer, you know, some of the insurance uh, in, uh, company, uh, hospital and so forth, mm. that they actually provide certain outcomes, right. right? Because like, for example, with Obamacare and so forth, there are certain penalty that you actually, right. you actually got readmitted after some kind of hospitalization. So you want to actually to make sure that it's minimized. How actually you do that? You can actually do that with technology as well. Mm. So all mm. of these actually business actually have to come together. Agriculture is actually another one. So slowly you can see, this is, we're still very much in the emerging cycle of this, but you can see many of this actually, uh, will actually happen in the next couple of years. Now, your customers, are they the Fortune 500 or Fortune 1000? I'm trying to remember. Uh, Fortune 1000. 1000. Yeah. Now, right. what would you say percentage-wise of the Fortune 1000 are one, 
actively are actively spending money in terms of of have an IoT product and supporting it, and uh -huh. two, starting the investigation phase, at least putting money into test labs and and um, and just an early investigation. What would you say the percentages are now? I will say based on the services. So you know the the we actually just just did, uh, finished a survey. Uh, based on the work that we did with the World Economic Forum, mm. uh, a large part of it is actually, in, uh, you know, still in the investigation stage. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, there are companies who are very much embedded, like you know, all the big companies. They are already part of the IoT, right? So, uh, take you know, basically like GE and Siemens yeah. and 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 the, the big companies there. It's part of the whole automation of the process. So it is hard to say, you know, whether they are in or out, but they are already part of that progression. I call them in. Right. right? So it's okay. like to sort of put it all together. Uh, they are pretty much already there yeah. for a while, right? right? They just don't call it uh, in, 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 uh, Internet of Things. Right. But it's part of the, the whole process. Make the, 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 the car smarter, uh, make the, their uh, truck or cars and, and, and the machinery hmm. smarter. This is a part of that progress. So, I mean, you brought up RFID, and that's an interesting one because there have been, as you know, because you're in the industry for a long time, there were predictions that RFIDs were going to be on everything. Mm -hmm. You know, there mm -hmm. were going to be a billions of these that's RFIDs. Right. That's right. There was going to be, you know, it was going to transform business. It didn't quite happen. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. what do you think is different between RFID and the Internet of Things? And because you know, there are similar parallels right. there. Right. In fact, the because I have actually been working in this space for a while, the, the one that really excites me this time is that I can see sort of the the, the, the business case and yeah. the roadmap. Right? Okay. So earlier we talked about operating efficient, uh, operational efficiency. And was that for RFID as well, operational efficiency? Was that the it main not, value proposition? It is not. It was not okay. at that time, okay. right? But you can actually see a little bit of that. So for example, we can actually use RFID, RFID to track materials and so forth, but given the price point at that time, and the technology immaturity, mm, mm. it is actually fairly expensive. At right. the end of the day, it's about our ROI to, get to make course, that happen. Yeah. But what we see here uh, this time is that, especially in the industrial space, yes. is that there's so much sensoring, se sensor technology already embedded into day-to-day -day operational technology. Right? The machinery is actually getting smarter, even tooling actually have sensors yeah. and so forth. Yeah, yeah. And that is actually the one that actually bring that uh, you know, to the, the, the next step. Okay. So the base structure that you have. So for example, I'm quite sure, you know, if uh, you, you pay attention for the newer cars, uh, even tires yeah. uh, have sensors in it, right? So you can actually detect, oh, you have a, uh, the wrong number, uh, the pressure, right? you have a flat tire there, uh, right. actually whether it's skid and so forth. There is already a lot of sensors, even at the tire mm. level, mm. right? Mm. So imagine what like, you can do, given that this, the, the, the price of sensors continue to drop. Yeah. Yeah. Right? There's a lot of things that actually is happening and converge to make that happen. So you're saying the ROI for IoT is a little bit stronger because the, the, R, the I part, the investment part, is less because because the costs have gone down and mm -hmm. the return part now there's some more real business models am i kind of paraphrasing properly? right and also there because of the recognition of the the need of the different organization coming together mm. so that, uh, my example will be the industrial internet consortium yes. right with okay. uh, within six months or so they'll be able to bring 80 or so organization to work together right so that you know, you'll be able to share a lot of common infrastructure, interoperability is yeah. like a sort of key aspect of it. Right. People realize that for them to be able to drive industrial internet, they need actually to work together, mm. right? Mm. So that the, the common infrastructure can be built and that the, the development of the application will be a lot cheaper and to be able to drive every, uh, everybody yeah. to go out there. Well, that brings up you know that brings up my next uh, topic. Uh, I know the Internet of, of the the Industrial Internet Consortium has a focus on security. I'd like to hear your thoughts on security, and particularly uh, best practices. What have you seen yeah. in IoT security? Yeah. So, uh, the Industrial Internet Consortium is actually pulling together whole best practices around security. But so let me actually share, share uh, one, one key point that I think. Uh, uh, you know, very easy, but uh, to somewhat like a trivial, but like a few people actually know about this is mm. that 
the fact to recognize IT and OT belong to two different organizations right. in many uh, companies out there. It's right? so a big the, barrier. Right. IT belong to the IT organization managed separately with a very different set of technology. OT typically belong to the production, you right. know, owned by either the, the, the factory manager and so forth, right? It's right. managed completely differently. Mm, now, mm. with the IT OT convergence, these two worlds actually being combined. But what happened is that you know, many organizations didn't realize that they need to actually have that yeah. set level of governance to put it together. Right. And this particular important beyond just the technology, security, again, go, go back to, to, to mm. this particular topic, mm -hmm. is where typically when you look at security bridges, it's like to look at the seam where actually it's disconnected oh, and really? be able to leverage, you know, to be able to leverage that, right? So how to make that tighter so that when you will be able to manage the security from the IT level, it propagate all the way down to the OT level, right? right. I think we are still in the very early stage actually like, making it that happen. In fact, yeah. this is actually the, the, if you look at the number of uh, the, the investment, the areas that we need to go to investigate quite a lot mm. is that particular space. Yeah, yeah, and you're you're right. It's that seam, and it's both a technical seam because mm -hmm. right now you know you're generally IP on the IT side, mm -hmm. and then you hit a gateway, and yep. then from that last mm -hmm. ragged mile, you're mm -hmm. whatever. Who knows mm -hmm. what the protocol is? And but then there's also that same seam, like you're saying, within the organization. One is kind of coming out of the operational expenses, maybe on the production side, and one's coming out of the, you know, the the the, the the I guess fixed expenses mm -hmm. that are more you know corporate side, mm -hmm. and so there has to be this. So the internet, the internet um, industrial internet consortium is working on both sides of that of that problem. They yeah they, they cover pretty much. There's mm. like a technical side, there's a framework side, and mm. then you know there is actually like other you know governance structure that have to put in place. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, the last topic I wanted to cover with you um, is cloud computing. Now, there's a few different philosophies in terms of where the processing should happen, but generally speaking, what are you seeing in terms of the role of the cloud for 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 IoT, and in particular IoT, if if you like to if you like to use that as an example. Um, does everything need the cloud? You know, does everything need to go up and down through the cloud? Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, so. I got this uh, question a lot. Uh, it's actually interesting to to remember back in the in the early days of the either client server or uh, mm. you know the the, the the web technology. Where actually competition happen, right? So there, you know, uh, for, for those of you who have been been a while, there's always discussion about uh, you know thick uh, client versus thin client. Where will that be? You know, and the same thing with the website, right? So then yeah. with the web server, how much actually web server actually have to handle versus the application container versus actually happening in the front end in, in your browser, right? That kind of the discussion. But in the industrial internet, uh, there is actually a certain uh, aspect that we need to actually pay attention to, especially that it is industrial, that there are certain things that have a hard constraint. Things has to happen within certain perimeter of time, right? Mm, so, mm. what what does that mean in terms of driving the uh, the, the cloud? So, cloud. If you actually think about it, uh, as much as you can actually do in the cloud, uh, you should actually be able to. You, you should try to do that because in cloud, it, you'll be able to manage things a little more centrally. Mm. You can actually reduce the operational cost, right? Okay. When you have thousands or millions of sensors out there right. and you have like, to go every single one of them that's actually like, not scalable mm. so uh, to the to the extent that you can you should actually bias your architecture toward cloud mm. now the word the keyword is uh, uh, the bias and this okay. is actually the the word that I uh, you know I, I reuse is like a Sanjay Sharma from MIT is the one that introduced this bias toward cl uh, cloud but what actually we want to realize that they need like, to have some level of competition in, to, to some degree, right? So things actually have to be reactive. Uh, so you don't want, for example, when you have a fire in the building, you don't want to go all the way to the cloud and come back and say, okay, now you can actually open the door. Right. There are things that actually have to happen very quickly. Right. How to make that happen? Or you're in your right? house and you are locked in and you, right. <laughs> you can't get out. So right, no, not everything is connect, uh, connected all, at all times. You actually sort of the SLA, yeah. the you know, resiliency of the architecture overall. But you know, you have to actually sort of recognize and figure out what actually makes sense to put at the edge, mm. right? At the sensor level, mm. and how you're gonna put it in somewhere in between, like you know, Cisco call it the fault computing, you yeah. know, in, in the middle tier there, mm. and then go to the cloud, right? 
and there's actually sort of a, the, the balancing act of trying to put it all together. Mm, mm, interesting, yeah. No, and it is a balancing act, but I like that. So a bias to the cloud is your recommendation, but obviously it depends on the use case and, and the scenarios that are, That's that are right. taking place. All right, well, very good. Um, Eddie, can you tell our, our, uh, our viewers where they can find out more of the work you're doing? Where, where should they go? Yeah, so uh, you know, more than happy I to share that uh, with, with the rest of the, the, the audience. Just search for in the internet, just say Accenture uh, and industrial internet. And that will and get you in there. Get there. Yeah, it's better than giving a URL. No one's going right. to remember the URL anyway. That's right. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me.